Hi all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine and welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A where I mark a former dive instructor, do my very best to answer your scuba diving questions. Uh, if you do have any scuba questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video, use this Ask Mark hashtag in your comment, question, query, whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't have to be at the beginning, it can be at the end, as long as it's in there. Uh, it basically highlights it behind the scenes for me to see. Uh, so I know to type out an answer as soon as I see it, so you do get an answer as soon as possible. Um, or the community as well like to answer questions, which is awesome, well done everyone. Uh, so if you do see an unanswered question down in the comments below, uh, by all means let them know the answer so they get their answer as soon as possible. Um, this week I'm answering a question from Chewbacca10 uh, about different BCD designs and especially backplate designs. So Chewbacca10 says, I am very new to the sport, having my very first dive in Jamaica two months ago. I've caught the bug and I've been researching everything I can ahead of my open water certification. As a new diver, I'm a bit overwhelmed by all of the choices of BCDs available to me. It's my understanding that backplate and harness systems offer the most flexibility and can be adapted as I grow in the sport. Do you agree with my assessment? If so, any recommendations on a backplate and harness system best for new divers traveling to most, if not all, of their dives? If not, which BCD style is best for longevity? Thank you for all your time. Pretty much, a, a backplate gives you options and choices. Standard, like recreational BCDs, they're all designed to dive with a single cylinder. I can't think of any examples that don't or aren't set up for just a single 12 or a 15 litre cylinder. Um, jump in the water and you're fine. That's what they're really designed for. That's the bread and butter. And while some now allow you to add sections and personalize the BCDs, in most cases, all you can really change is the straps and the, uh, the lengths of the straps and whatnot. Um, but with a, a backplate and harness system, yeah, you can fully change the, the complete harness where all the D-rings are and all that stuff. Uh, you can change the wing. Um, yeah, so there are three styles of recreational BCD, really. Uh, you get a jacket style, which is what most divers learn to dive with. You have this like waistcoat thing that goes on you and the bladder inflates around you. You typically have side pockets around your waist and then just a a cam band on the back to attach a cylinder and and that's it the d-rings are where they are you have often integrated weight pockets which are quite a nice feature um but but that's it that can be quite limiting a lot of divers tend to grow out of them fairly quickly there's nothing particularly wrong with them it's just they tend to be a bit heavier um yeah they're limited to single cylinder diving so that's kind of it if something breaks on it the entire BCD is often scrapped because everything's stitched in place. Um, so they can be fairly limiting. Um, th they still work perfectly fine. Uh, you see a lot of professional divers still dive jacket style BCDs. There's nothing overly wrong with them. You can dive perfectly well with a jacket style BCD. Uh, it's just that a lot of divers prefer something a bit more um, uh, minimalist, shall we say. So then you get wing style bcds so wing style bcds don't have the bladder that extends around in front of you as well so all of the inflation is behind you they typically have longer shoulder straps so you get a bit more adjustment in them and a lot of divers find that they they feel a bit more freedom in them even or especially when they're fully inflated when you fully inflate a jacket style bcd of course it inflates around your rib cage and it ugh, kind of squeezes you in so trying to get a full breath can can be tricky you just need to lengthen off those straps but with a wing style bcd all that buoyancy is behind you so um so yeah you can inflate it all the way and you won't really feel a thing um they still often still have quick release uh, weight pouches as well depends on the design and some of them nowadays you look at something like a 
an Aqualung Rogue um, or a, a Hydros Pro from Scuba Pro, yeah, you can change the, uh, the pocket design and you can add and remove things. But for complete uh, like flexibility in, say, in five, ten years' time or however long, uh, you suddenly decide that you want to dive on twins, then, yeah, a backplate and wing system is kind of the way to go. And a lot of new divers are starting out in backplate and wings. Um, you do have a few choices. And the, um, the main thing comes down to the material of the backplate. <clears throat> so this one is steel. This is my like home backplate and steel is obviously heavy so it adds a bit of trim weight so you don't need as much lead on your weight belt and it's nice and strong it adds that trim weight to my back which is quite a nice like way of keeping my head down so i'm a bit more horizontal in the water and it has all of these attachment points so you can attach twin cylinders onto it or if you want to you've got these vertical slots so you can put cam bands through it or you can just bolt a, a single tank adapter on the other side of the wing. The wing is the third part of the, uh, the backplate and harness system. Uh, obviously the harness is a part of it. You can either go really Spartan like this one, which is usually called a DIR style harness. Uh, this one isn't true DIR because it has this little adjustment point here. This is an A-gear Harper loop, just makes it a bit easier for me to lengthen off that shoulder strap, but it doesn't put a break in the harness. Um, but when I'm traveling, it's a bit heavy. Uh, you can still travel with it, but where you don't need that additional weight because you're usually dry, uh, diving somewhere warm, so you need less lead weight anyway, then I just dive with a um, an aluminium harness, so it's the same, or more or less the same shape, it has the same attachment points, but the backplate itself is a lot lighter, so it's a lot easier to travel with it. And then if I'm diving on single cylinders, then I just have a single cylinder wing, which is a lot smaller. If I'm diving on twin cylinders, then I can just take that single, cylinder, that single wing off and just fit a twin wing. Um, the only um, different uh, mounting setup would be side mount, but side mount diving is a bit more specialist and it's better if you just have a side mount specific BCD um, because yeah, then you're not mounting anything to your back. So you need a different shape wing altogether and it's, it's just better to have a dedicated side mount wing if you're going down the side mount route. For singles and twins, yeah, backplane harness uh, is usually the best way to go. And the best thing with that is you can add and remove D-rings. You can move them wherever you want. Um, and if you want an extra D-ring, you can add an extra one. It's all always two inch wide webbing. So all of the D-rings and things will always fit two inch webbing and you can control where they are. These, for example, are pre-bent stainless steel ones. These are titanium, so these are a lot lighter. These usually go on my travel wing and you don't need a tri-glider for these ones. You can just fit them wherever you want. Um, so it's very easy to customize and add things. The harness itself didn't come with these um, neoprene shoulder protectors, for example and it's just nice just to prevent that from digging in uh, and like rubbing on your neck. And you can change the, the harness style. If you want something with a bit more flexibility, you can get some harnesses that have either one adjustable strap, um, one quick release buckle on one side. So one side is fixed, the other one is adjustable. You can get them where they're both adjustable. You can get them where it basically has a a uh, soft stitched padded BCD style harness. So it's like halfway between a recreational BCD. So you have the comfort, the quick adjust, you, you have everything stitched in place, 
but you also have the flexibility of the back plate that allows you to change the wing behind so it changes your buoyancy um, between like singles and twin cylinders uh, yeah as far as flexibility and future proofing yeah back plates really are the way to go um, the main decision really is like the the material of the back plates uh, there are some funky designs uh, this one you might be able to see it just here is a uh, an x deep zen design uh, so instead of a traditional this is very much a traditional design back plate um, they're, they're pretty standardized they haven't changed that much but x deep came out a few years ago and they they brought out this design which is nice and comfortable they they widened out the top section and the bottom section so it's it, it spreads the uh, the force of the back plate and the cylinders a bit more comfortably over your back um and then yeah it just comes down to back plate material if you're just planning on diving at home travel isn't really uh, on your radar then steel is usually the best way to go if you're planning on traveling a bit more then your yeah, aluminium is usually the best way to go because you still have the benefits you still have the uh, the strength and the mounting points but it's a lot lighter there are lighter options still but they're usually made of material so then you don't get the benefit of the rigidity um so mounting twins onto it they'll they'll move about even singles will start like flopping about whereas if you're bolting it to a sheet of metal it all moves around with you so um yes basically to answer your question to um to, to start out if i was starting out again learning to uh, to dive with all of my current knowledge yeah i wouldn't bother with like recreational uh, BCDs I'd go straight to uh, to back plates um, which ones would I recommend yeah I like the uh, the X deep Zen um, for their um, for their back plate design and the Mares XR they keep changing the name but it's usually just called like a single single mount set they um, the, the, they brought out a few the first one was the red devil then they had um, Calavera, they've had Silver Knight. It, they changed the design of it. So the, the Red Devil, had, the back plate had a red finish to it, as did all of the uh, the, the hardware, which is pretty cool. Um, Psycho Calavera, I think they called it. It had this um, uh, like Day of the Dead, like skulls and things on it, which was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what next year's, I think this year's is Polygon. Or something it's got funky triangles and stuff and it's a cool design um but yeah Mario's xr because then it comes like fully assembled uh, which is quite nice uh scuba pro s tech also have some cool designs they've redesigned their back plates um to be a bit more uh like diver friendly they're less spartan uh, as this one is they've got some quite clever like recesses for the uh, for the wing nuts and stuff uh, there's lots of clever designs as long as you stick with the uh, the, the the higher up the uh, the big brands you're usually pretty safe uh, but yeah just decide whether you're like traveling more or just diving at home uh, and that will decide what material your uh, backplate can be made from yeah i've even seen where some dive schools are using backplate and, uh, and wing systems as school equipment which i think is pretty cool because it almost like gives them that jump start and for school equipment it really does make sense usually with a lot of manufacturers they they make a specific range of school equipment and you, you can usually only buy it if you're a dive center um you you tend to buy it in bulk so you get three of these sizes three of these three of these um they typically have the sizes much more prominently marked so it's a bit easier for a dive school and rental the equipment tends to be a bit tougher uh, so it, it keeps up with um uh, with divers but the downside is is that if that's what you're learning to dive with it may put some divers off because they think, oh, Struth, this equipment isn't particularly comfortable because it's school equipment. It's made to be tough. It's not really built for comfort. It's built for like to be economic and to last as long as possible. Whereas 
if you put them in a black if you put them in a backplate system yeah you can kind of customize it to um to, to suit them it takes a bit more time to uh, to teach them how to adjust a harness so that they get a, a complete harness and backplate system that fits them nice and comfortably um but hey yeah you probably get that kind of sense of accomplishment as a uh, as a diver and yeah, they're, they're already learning and like normalizing this kind of equipment. When I first learned to dive, this was like tech diving equipment. Don't even bother looking at it unless you're breathing like mixed gases and all that kind of stuff. But now that I've dived it countless times, you're like, actually, it's pretty simple. Um, it's not quite as simple as just you buy this one item, you strap it on your back and you go for a dive. In a lot of cases, there needs to be a fair amount of adjustment and customization. But once you've done that, yeah, you get your complete backplate system. And if the wing, oh, for example, is punctured or, or something goes wrong with it, you have the zipper, oh, which I've tucked in on this one, to, um, to uh, unzip it. And then you can open it up. You can find the leak. You can either do a puncture repair on it, um, or you can just get a new bladder and then just replace it. It's, um, it, it's very, very customizable. Whereas, uh, I mean, we had a diver once where they were climbing out of a, a ladder and the handrail on one side had that like single bit that sticks out. They got a D-ring that hooked over that as they were pulling themselves out and they kind of gave it one to get out of the water, ripped that D-ring off, wrote the entire BCD off because of a single D-ring because you can't just re-stitch it. Um, whereas with this if if i somehow manage to rip that d-ring off then okay yeah i just unthread it and um and you can just replace it uh, i've done it countless times and it's it's really easy to to customize it to your heart's content so say i didn't want this stainless steel buckle on here i've got a plastic one uh so if you want to save weight, that saving, granted, is only a few grams, but when you're changing that lump of stainless steel, that lump of stainless steel, all the other stainless steel on this harness, you can save yourself a good amount of weight. So you can customize it to, uh, to your heart's content because the harnesses are all two inch webbing harnesses. It makes your life that much easier. Um, so to like future proof, yeah, back plates really are the uh, the best way to go. Um, but if you have any other recommendations on, on back plate and harness systems, because uh, there are plenty out there nowadays, by all means, put them down in the comment section below for, I think it was Chewbacca 10 to um, uh, to read up on. My ones are usually X-Deep Zen and uh, Amara's XR. The Scuba Pro te uh, S-Tech ones are, are pretty snazzy nowadays as well. Um, but yeah, if you have any other recommendations, by all means, put them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, if you have any questions that you would like answered, again, pop them down in the comment section. Use that Ask Mark hashtag and that will get it featured in an up and coming video. Uh, otherwise, remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com, check out our magazine. Uh, we have three magazines that go out around the world. Um, and of course, subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Thank you for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving.